we got to come back to the positive stuff, the positive side. How did Israel treat everybody else? You know what I mean? When we was ruling. You know what I mean? And that's how we got to be again. Nobody yeah. We straight up with everything. Right. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall also reap. Right. Yeah. So whatever we sow, if we reap. If you, if you reap of anger, oh, it's a new thing that then that anger is going to be on you. And people are going to recognize your continence. Right? And where does your continence begin? In your forehead, right? Give me forehead in this in this book. Let me show you, because people don't know that this is what holds your spirit to your forehead. This is why you got a forehead, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, some people got five heads. I might have a five head. You know what I mean? But we're going to show you what the scripture says. Give me um, uh, Isaiah 8 and 16. And let me show you, according to the scriptures, your countenance. People don't even know what that word means, countenance. Countenance is just the expression of your face. All right? You tell a sister, girl, I like your countenance. She might fall in love with you. You ain't never heard that word before. Countenance. All right? So uh, when he finds that, he'll get it. Read Isaiah 8, 16. For Book of Isaiah chapter, chapter 8, verse 16. Uh -huh. Bind up the testimony. Uh -huh. Seal the law among my disciples. So the law is going to be sealed from us, the disciples. And how is it going to be sealed? In our foreheads. The law. Right? You got forehead? This is the Thunder Van Compact Bible Dictionary. The definition for forehead. The part of the face above the eyes often revealing the character of the person. See that? Shame, shamelessness. Shameless. Courage. Courage. Or godliness. Right, so your forehead represents each one of those characteristics. You can see a shameless man based on his countenance. His forehead, how his eyebrows raised, how he sit, how the lines form. You know what I mean? You see a man with a lot of lines in his forehead, that man under a lot of stress. You know what I mean? Forehead. Women cover their foreheads with bangs. Yeah. You can't see their foreheads. You know? But men, we got to show our foreheads. There ain't no way around it. You see, bro brothers wearing a lot of hats. You know what I mean? You all show your forehead. You covered up your, your countenance. You know what I mean? But that came from the Greeks. The Greeks did that when they went to war. They wore those baseball caps. It's in the book of the Apocrypha. First Maccabees, first chapter, talks about how Alexander the Greek, his men wore baseball caps. All right? know that. Yeah. yeah. That's where it comes from. But all these guys wearing baseball caps, they follow the Greek, the Greek order. All right? We all wear them, but that's where the history of it comes from. All right? And it covers up your countenance. Your eye, your hat, your beard sits over your eyes. Yeah, and you know, you bend your beard so nobody can really see your eyes. You know what I mean? So your countenance is everything. Right? Look at that, uh, I mean, it's funny because, like, when you watch shows, uh, like, uh, what's the name of the movie with Harrison Ford? And he was running away from the police and all that? Uh, Fugitive. Okay, you Fugitive. Fugitive. You ever seen Fugitive? Fugitive was about a man that was running from the law. And what he did was he... Whenever you see people, because they had uh, they had they had posters and stuff of the man's face. You know, someone breaks the law, they put oh pictures up and all that. So people wear hats, and then when they see the law, they dip their head down, right? Hide their countenance, hide, hide your face. You know what I mean? Uh, give me Isaiah eight and twenty. Book of Isaiah, chapter eight, verse twenty. To the law and to the testimony. Uh -huh. If they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. Right. No light in them. So what is the light? We know what the light is, right? Right. So when you go into Psalms 119, 142, somebody give me that. Psalms 119, 142. What's that? You got a thousand questions, but I'm ready. Psalms 19, Psalms 119. 119. 119. That's the longest chapter in the Bible. That's 42. right. What's the shortest? What's the shortest book of the Bible? It's what Jesus wrote. No, that's, that's a verse. What's the shortest book? The shortest chapter. The shortest chapter. Shortest chapter. It's in Psalms 2. I think it's Psalms 116. It's right by. You're real close. Psalms 119 and 22. The only way to get to God is by giving me Psalms 119 and 9. 
Well, that New Testament said the only way to get to God is through Jesus Christ. Right. But 119 Psalm said the only way to get to God is by keeping the statutes and laws and his commandments. That's right. That's what we're about to read. Watch. The book of Psalms. Chapter 119, verse 142. Uh -huh. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness. Uh -huh. And thy law is the truth. And thy law is the truth. I know which one you're talking about. You're talking about 119 and 10. Go ahead. 143. No, stop. Go to this one. 119 and 9. Book of Psalms, chapter 119, verse 9. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? What? By taking heed thereto according to the word. According to the word. Now that's what they say in the New Testament. According to the word. And who's the word? According to the word. God's word. That's right. So in the Bible it says, give me first John, the uh, Gospel of John, chapter one and verse one. That's what John, we're about to jump on what he talking about now. Because he, uh, he mentioned Christ. Now, all that time you said, you never told me if you believed in the New Testament. No, I don't believe in the New Testament. I'm the Old Testament. Yeah, you better believe in the New Testament. Just like you believe in the Old. It's the same thing. But it's been tampered with. It's just letters, man. That's all it is. Look in the beginning of your Bible. This I understand I understand all that. that I understand all that. And God is the same today, and he shall be the same forever. I believe forever. in Emmanuel. First John chapter 1 verse 1. What? That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have gospel John. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. John the Gospel. I got without you know what? Uh, I just want to show you. Because we mentioned the word in Psalms 119 and 9. And in the New Testament, it speaks of the word too. And I know uh, you coming from Desmona, right? He's in Desmona. This brother's in Desmona, Jerusalem, right? And then he, then he fell out the truth and he came to California. You <laughs> were still hot over there. <laughs> go, go ahead. First, St. John, chapter 1, verse 1. Right. In the beginning was the Word. All right, so in the beginning we read it in there. Right. And the Word was with God. So the Word was with the Most High. And the Word was God. Can you give me that in uh, Genesis? Right. The same was in the beginning with God. The same was in the beginning with the Most High, right? So we know according to the Scriptures, the Word in the Old Testament was God, right? We know this, right? But why do they say we worship God on Sunday? If you're not worshiping God, that's on a the different Sabbath guy. Day, that's a different guy. That's a pagan. That's, 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 that's that image right that's there. That's the sun god. That's that image right there. Right. right. That's Michelangelo's son. Yeah, that's the sun yeah. god. That's the sun. They, they worship rock. That's a different guy. Okay. Right. Can I share a break with you? Can we finish what we pulled yeah. over before you switch the uh, subject? So we can talk about this all day now. It's okay. I'm, okay. I'm here for that. <laughs> Go ahead. I love it. Hey, we wait for sundown. We can't eat till sundown, so we about to stay out here all day. And the, and the due day starts when? It's sundown. Here it is. So we can be out here all day. I took you from the pastures and from following the sheep to be prince over my people as well. I have been with you wherever you have gone and have destroyed all the enemies in your path. I will make you a great name among the great ones of the earth. I will assign a place for my people in Israel. There I will plant them, and they shall dwell in their own land. Lions Royal Israelites by supporting our members, businesses by donating or applying for services at lionsroyalisraelites.com or freemethelast.com.